Hi, everyone. I'm Tanya, the VP of International Marketing at GoTab. I want to thank you all for joining us for our webinar, Switching Your Point of Sale Made Easy. We're excited to have you on with us. Before we kick things off, I want to run through a few technicalities with you. First of all, unfortunately, our live chat is not working. <laughs> so sorry about that. But you will be able to post any of your questions in the Q&A section, and we'll address that at the end. I'm from the Czech Republic, and I currently reside in Colorado. But today, I have the pleasure of sitting at Craftworks Tap Room in Gainesville, Virginia, hello. with my friend, Chris. Uh, so hello, Chris. Thank you. Good to have you on. I'll go get us some beers. <laughs> Great. I will, I'll take one or two. We'll see. Uh, feel free to ask Chris any questions throughout the event via our Q&A. Like I said, sorry, our live chat is not working, but we'll, we'll get to most of them hopefully at the Q&A section here. And if not, we'll just follow up with you after the recording. Chris is ready to answer any questions you might have. Also, if you run in any, into any technical issues, do not worry. We'll be sending the full webinar recording later today. And before we get started, I would like to mention that GoTab offers so much more than just the point of sales that we're going to be talking about a lot today. GoTab is a hospitality commerce platform designed to improve efficiency, both in the front and back of the house and guest experiences, no matter how your guests desire to dine. GoTab empowers consumers with mobile order, pay technology, I think beers are on the way. Free technology that puts them into control. GoTab operators run lean, profitable hospitality operations with easy to use restaurant commerce tool. With mobile ordering, mobile payment, and all-in-one restaurant point of sale and kitchen management system, our goal is to help operators like you understand what to look for in your perfect point of sale and also simplify the process of switching if you are unhappy with your current provider. We have broken down our webinar agenda into three sections. We'll first cover Craftworks beginnings, move on to the improvements, talk about their system and processes, and finish up with sharing some of the great results and impact that switching to GoTab has had on Craftworks operations. Now, let's take a look at who we have partnered up with, with for, today, for today's webinar. That's handy. <laughs> this partner is particularly close to my heart as I was their VP of marketing until March of this year. For my beer is the global leader in the self-service beverage technology. You can actually see some of the screens here behind us at Chris's place. <laughs> Currently, they're operating in over 500 locations with more than 12,000 taps connected globally. For my beer empowers customers to pour their own drinks, eliminating waiting times and enhancing their overall drinking experience. GoTap and For My Beer integration allows for even faster check-in and check-out of the guests, as well as providing customers with an even smoother experience. The beauty of this integration lays in a For My Beer's operator opening up and closing taps so much faster in one single system, and that's GoTap point of sale, which significantly cuts down the wait time for customers, and we'll talk about that quite a bit later today. GoTap empowers consumers with mobile ordering, payment technology that puts them in control of their dining experience. We'll talk about the poor maybe technology and the integration quite a, quite a bit throughout the webinar. And if you have any questions, like we said, post them in the Q&A section. So now let's have Chris come up, or I guess he's already here with me, uh, and give us some background on his career and talk a little bit how he even got started with Craftworks in the first place. All right. First, let's toast. All right. Uh, what am I? What am I drinking? So what we have here is a flip flop. It's a delicious uh, sour from Ono in Chantilly, Virginia. Great. Um, and as it turns out, Ono is actually a GoTab and Pour My Beer customer. So okay. Great that you guys have family. this community all thing going on. Cheers. Cool. Cheers, everybody. Hopefully, somebody's drinking something good with us too. It might be early on on the West Coast. Um, sounds delicious. So let's let's talk a little bit about your background in the industry and how you got started with Craftworks. So. Um, as many of you, I'm sure, um, I worked in restaurants through high school, helped pay my way through college, worked in restaurants. Um, actually, in, in college, I uh, built a food costing system um, on COBOL. That tells you how old I am. An operating system that most of you have probably never heard of. I mean, a, a programming, lang programming language most of you have never heard of. Um, my actual career was finance technology. I uh, um, owned a few different technology companies over the years, still do. Um, Lately, I had been doing a lot more in real estate investment, um, but I also do have investments in um, an in uh, another restaurant, a barbecue restaurant. And uh, but Craftworks is by far the biggest 
operation in the hospitality space for me. And the most fun. <laughs> certainly, certainly. <laughs> well, let's talk a little bit more about Craftwork Stop Room. How did you bring this location from an idea to reality? Let's let's just, let's have the audience discover a little bit more about what Craftworks really is. So um I initially saw self pour in operation at a, at a restaurant and I love efficiency and I don't like waiting. Um, and that was really what drove me. I said, if I ever open a, if I ever open a tap room, um, I will go with a self pour model. Um, and, but I also saw an operation at, um, Ono brewing, as I mentioned, the beer we're drinking right now, um, local to me. And I thought, you know, that's a, that's a great way to do it. But I was on to other things, doing my, my technology stuff, my, uh, my real estate stuff. And then COVID hit. And uh, made the real estate thing a little bit tougher to do. Um, it gave me time and uh, spaces opened up because some businesses that didn't make it. So I took the opportunity to take over a bar that was um, pretty well outfitted. Um, it was very easy for me because really what I did is I ripped out a great big traditional bar and built my giant 60, now 70 tap uh, self-pour wall. So my my turnaround time is pretty quick and we were able to get, get going pretty easily for minimal cost. Um, so yeah, it was a pretty easy and smooth process getting opened. Okay, great. Uh, can we talk a little bit about your guest experience? What did you imagine that to be like prior to the opening and what was it like the first year? Yep. So I, I'm, I'm sort of impatient. I don't like waiting. Um, my friends will all tell you, I get very frustrated if uh, things aren't running smoothly. So I wanted a smooth, low friction um, process for the customers, similar to what I'd seen at, at previous self core establishments. Um, the location I picked is directly across the street from a 25,000 person music venue, um, which obviously means we are literally across the street, three quarters of a mile. It gets and, busy here before the shows. Um, and it gets busy and we get a whole lot of people really fast. So I needed to accommodate literally hundreds of people walking in, in a, in a you know 30 minute span of time. Um, I'm a technology guy. I wanted to leverage technology, but not for technology's sake. I wanted, um, I wanted to leverage technology both for operations and to maximize the customer experience. Um, I, I also wanted, it was key, important that guests get what they want when they want it. Like I said, I don't like waiting. Um, I know a lot of people don't. So I tried to set up the business so that, you know, you could come in, you could get your beer, you know, you're in the building for a matter of seconds. So you've got a beer in your hand, you're at your table, you're scanning your QR, you're getting your food, your food quickly. You're not waiting for people. Um, I wanted to use the technology to take away a lot of the mundane tasks from staff so that staff could put their energy towards engaging with customers rather than just working on transactions and other sorts of things. Um, unfortunately, my prior point of sale did have some limitations. It worked, but it, um, there were some limitations where I couldn't do that as smoothly and cleanly as I would like. Okay. Um, can you tell us a little bit, a little bit about the tools that you're using here, other third parties that you're using besides GoTap and Pour My Beer that you've already mentioned? Yeah, so obviously GoTap and Pour My Beer form that sort of core systems for my business. That's my, what runs my day-to-day -day business and <clears throat> couldn't run without them. Um, I also depend heavily on Untapped, which you see behind me, you'll see my Untapped screens. Um, Untapped is very tightly integrated with both For My Beer and GoTab. So the process of adding a beer is very simple. I add it once and it goes across the system and it's, it's seamless. May not be important for everybody. Um, I've had over 500 beers on tap since we opened. Um, oh, if, I had, a lot to manage. if I had to do manual work for every one of those 500, that would have been something. But now I simply add it and untap and bring straight across to pour my beer and untap. And that's been fantastic. Um, we use seven shifts uh, for shift schedule, uh, staff scheduling. Um, management staff both love it. It's super easy. Um, as long as they pay attention to their screen, everybody shows up on time. Shout out uh, to no, our friends in seven shift. Yeah, no, <laughs> no phone calls and texts to say, can you come in? It's all, all through the system. Um, and we also use a couple other things. Margin Edge is a, a, we're using that for food costing and uh, Clavio we're using for, um, for marketing and outreach. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, what led you to want to switch your point of sale? So I haven't mentioned before, our, we started with Toast. Um, it's a very good system does a lot of things well, um, but it, we found it didn't have the flexibility to do everything we wanted. We ran with it for well over a year and you know did great business with it, but there were, there were limitations um, that um, because the integration, because of some other things, it, it, it limited our ability to really deliver the customer experience at the level we wanted. Um, for example, um, something as simple as the check-in process because of the way we work with, with self-pour, um, it was a, a two-part requiring two terminals um, fraught with errors because you had to pull a name up and do some things. Um, 
Same thing with the checkout. We had issues of, of um, people getting the wrong card, the wrong tab, things like that. Um, when I saw the opportunity to go to a system that there's no chance of anything, any mistakes. It's a one part system, same terminal in seconds. Um, I thought that's, you know, that was really a, a, a bonus. Um, you know, cost is a factor. I'm sure all of you are certainly concerned about your POS cost. Um, you've got, you know, the initial hardware cost, which is, which is painful um, with, with other systems. Um, you know, I'm paying a monthly maintenance, I was paying a monthly maintenance fee. Um, and then of course the merchant fees, um, all of those are much lower. In fact, the, um, I've got some screens behind me. These are, uh, I switched to GoTab and uh, Samsung terminals, not, not proprietary, not proprietary devices that um, don't do anything else. These are Samsung term terminals. And um, yeah, so that was nice. Give me the flexibility that use devices for multiple things. And so much um, cheaper. Much cheaper, much easier. Um, and then there are even capabilities I didn't know existed that once I saw those, I was like, all right, well, that's, that's, it's worth jumping on that. Uh, for example, uh, we have a large space, different areas, different zones. We have different rooms. Um, we have events in different spaces. The ability to run different menus in different spaces with different schedules um, is really nice. And having all that set up in advance, and we couldn't really do that effectively before. There was a lot of going into the back end and making changes at last minute and um, you know, having to give staff manager access to go do things that I would rather not. Um, as an operator, real-time visibility in the business is critical and i just wasn't getting the level of detail and the, the speed of access to real-time real-time data um and again when i saw that GoTab had the ability to literally i can pull up on my phone right now not just sales data that's a little bit old um mm -hmm. you know updated 30 minutes ago i can literally see point up the point of sale i can see current checks um i can get real-time data things like that and I, I saw that and said okay that's that's worth switching um, and then support. I, I never felt that I was getting the support that made me feel comfortable. Um, I always felt if, if I was always on the edge, if something, if something goes wrong on a busy show when we've got a show night, when there's hundreds of people in here and there's 20 people pouring beers, um, if something goes wrong, I don't, I, there's no way I would get to support and get it solved till the end of the weekend. So, um, yeah, so I felt it was time to make a switch. Okay. Rather deep go tap. <laughs> uh, what was the timeline for switching? Our, um, what was your experience overall with the switching? So, as I said, our system was 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 working. Um, wasn't ideal, but it was working. And you know, we're all used to dealing with things that aren't quite what you want. So we we were fine. We could we could still be running with it. Um, so we weren't in a rush. Um, but it, what we did is basically switch overall was easy. Um, it's the preparation that's important. So um, you, you know, if you spend you spend a couple weeks preparing, making sure that you understand your processes, um, you know, looking into how everything's going to map to the new system, all that sort of thing. Um, you spend a couple of weeks doing that, but the actual switchover is, is not difficult at all. Um, and as far as, uh, I have a technical background, so I did a whole lot of it myself. I'm comfortable, you know, downloading spreadsheets and editing and uploading CSVs and not destroying the system. Um, but to the extent I did need help, my support team, uh, Noel, Simone, Henry, um, they were fantastic. Anything I need, I got turned around. Um, I, in fact, I needed another terminal and Henry came and dropped it off for me. Um, I, I didn't know names of anyone at my previous provider. So just the fact that I, I know the people and, and you know I can call them and speak to them and they know my business is, is super valuable to me. Great, thank you. Uh, you and I talked a little bit about uh, onboarding checklist. Uh, lots of this can be done. Actually, all of this can be done with the help of GoTab and by the GoTab team. But I know you said because you're technical, and you wanted to uh, you wanted to do a lot of it by yourself, so you would know and be prepared. Yeah. Can you talk to us a little bit about your the actual onboarding experience, onboarding checklist? What were some of the things that you would advise to other operators listening? Yeah. So, um, yeah, of course, I've got lots of lists of the various different things. I'm happy to share those with anybody who's interested. So let's um, <laughs> um, I would say probably the most important thing is, is um, look at this as an opportunity to improve your processes. Look at the capabilities that, that's, if you're switching to GoTab, look at the capabilities it brings to the table and review all your processes. Because what you don't want to do is just, you know, one for one swap. Here's the new system. We did it this way. We're going to do it this way. Um, so we took a hard look at that and said, how are we doing things now? And what capabilities does GoTab bring to the table that would allow us to, to enhance that? Um, so I think that's a super important um, part of it. For example, 
Um, I mentioned GoTab has the ability to handle zones. You know, we didn't do that previously. So I thought, okay, um, we created a standing zone. And with that standing zone, because we had an issue with QR codes on table, somebody reaches over table, scans the QR, thinks, well, I ordered, I'm fine. They go wandering off somewhere else. And our poor staff, our food runners are running around asking, where's Tanya? There's no Tanya at this table. Or worse yet, dropping it on B4 because it said so. Yeah. Now, Tanya's got a free um, sliced brisket sandwich. And, I'll take it. <laughs> and Chris is in the back wondering where his sandwich is. Um, with GoTab, we had the ability to create different zones so we could have a standing zone. If you scan that, it'll say, okay, your food will be pick up. Your food is ready for pickup at the at the pickup window. If you scan a seated zone, we bring the food to you. Um, that was something that didn't exist before. And now we can take advantage of that. Um, menu scheduling is another one. We we I literally have to go into the old system daily and change my schedules or create multiple menus. And it's very complicated. I have flexibility now that I can create in advance schedules, very detailed menu scheduling, item scheduling, even things like that. And for business like mine, where we've got a lot of different things going on, that was super critical. Um, another really cool feature is guest communication. Uh, GoTab has two-way guest communication. So um, kitchen can actually guess, uh, can actually text a guest. So if, you know, the kitchen runs out of something, they have some question about order, they can text a guest, guest can text back. Same with front of house. Um, it's a lot easier than kitchen yelling to the expo for to run somebody out to B4 to find out, you know, did Tanya really want two orders of two guacamole sides or whatever, you know? Um, so that's been really good. Um, obviously, I guess the most important is make sure everything that you're doing is covered in the new system. So the first thing we did is sort of methodically go through and say, okay, here's everything the system's doing for us. You know, either we're doing it this way or we're going to not do it anymore, but just make sure they're all covered. You don't want any surprises when you go live and find out that you forgot to handle some specific asset aspect of the business. Definitely. Are there any big lessons that you have learned? Anything you you would have done differently if you were to do this switch of point of sale again? Um, I would say I would do it sooner. Um, you know, we're, we're definitely seeing benefits. And um, I mean, it is daunting. So, you know, you tend to put these things off. Um, is it really that bad <laughs> as it, the industry before, claims? It? Before you've done it, it does seem like it. And then you do it, you're like, oh, well. Like I said, I should have done that. Wasn't story. that painful? Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, it's it's sort of like cleaning out your closet. You know, it's not that hard, but once you get it done, you're glad you did it. Um, but I think the most important thing for us is um, if we had done this sooner, we would be adding even more features than that. You know, we would be further down. You know, there's other things we want to do. And now I'm, I'm like, oh, yeah, now I can do this. And now I can do this. And it's just, I wish I'd done it sooner. Um, in terms of other things, I guess I would say um, I probably would have done more staff training. Um, it's not that GoTab is difficult, not that it's, um, you know, it requires a lot of training. It's very intuitive, but it's different. Um, and, you know, staff tend to develop habits and, you know, you've punched a certain way a thousand times, you're going to start to do that again. So I would have probably worked a little harder to say, this is the way to do it now and, and make sure people work through it. Um, but again, it's not not that it's difficult it's just different and i didn't recognize that for some people that's a that's a challenge yeah uh so this concludes the background and just the operations of graphworks if you have any questions about that please just post in the q a section so you can we can answer those later at the end of this webinar right now we're gonna hop in my favorite and last sec section of this webinar and that's the results that and the impact that switching to GoTab has had on Chris's operations. So uh, let's chat a little bit about that. Uh, can right. you tell us how the switch of point of sale for you affected, how it affected your guest? Yep. Any so, success stories you yeah, can yeah, share? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, one word I would use, I'll use a lot probably, faster. Um, check-in is faster, check-out's faster, faster, communication is faster. Um, like I said, you, you know, communicating directly with the guest from thing. So just a whole lot of transactions. Um, you know, speed's important in, in this business and the way we operate. So yeah, um, check in, check out faster. Everything else is faster. Um, certainly, we've seen a reduction in mistakes um, on a number of fronts because of the, um, the two-part process in the beginning led to some mistakes, um, you know, because it's difficult the, the way the 86, 86 in the items works in the old system. We'd be taking orders for items that were out of that sort of thing. So we've been able to eliminate a lot of that. Um, Again, the, the separate zones is, is, you know, sort of a game changer and we're continuing to explore that. Um, one big one um, 
GoTab has a feature called uh, EasyTab, um, which I don't know that anybody else has, but um, it gives you the ability to open a tab, for example, at the bar, the front, and then share that tab with the guests. They bring that tab with them. So um, they open the tab in the front, they sit down, now they order food on the same tab. So they don't have to close out here, go there. Um, you don't have that sort of confusion. Even if they move tables, they can move tables and switch that tab to the new table. Um, we couldn't, we didn't have that kind of capability before. So the easy tab things is really cool, uh, particularly with the way we operate with, with self four, but just in general, it's, you know, opening a tab at the bar and being able to bring that two tables cool. Um, another thing that's really neat is um, the ability to share tabs. Customers can actually, um, you know, the traditional model, you're at a restaurant and, you know, you scan a QR and, you know, I want Tanya to order something, I either hand her my phone or she goes and pulls a menu up and then she recites it back to me. Um, you know, awkward, a lot of issues there. Um, the ability to share a tab, I can just pull my phone up, give her a QR, she scans my phone, she's on my tab, she orders, you know, um, with my approval, then I can pay for the tab. You don't always um, have to ask. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so that's, that's certainly been a huge benefit. Um, and, you know, for guests, of course, it's a big one. And then, uh, like I said, the two-way communication, I think that's really, really been a benefit, really cool. Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, as a guest, I have to say I've enjoyed it on multiple occasions that I've visited Craftworks in the last last week. Uh, now, can you tell me what this uh, what this uh, switch, uh, what type of effect did it have on your staff members? How did they like it? Hopefully they like it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, use the same word again, fast. Um, you know, things happen much faster. Um, the interaction with the guests and everything, but also just, you know, loading data, accessing data, um, being able to pull up information and I get I get real-time data really, really fast, mm -hmm. um, which is very helpful, not old data. Um, you know, opening and closing tabs, I said, is something you do all day, a whole bunch of the day, and that's, that's much faster. Um, I think the, I need to have a beer. <laughs> I know you're talking a lot, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Big. Um, Really unique to GoTab versus, versus any other system I've seen. Um, the ease of access to the KDS, uh, point of sale KDS, not from a device, not just from a locked in device that you've paid a whole bunch of money for that sits in one spot, um, but from your phone. Um, from my phone, I can pull up, um, I can pull up the KDS right now. So the kitchen staff could have the KDS on their phone just to keep an eye on, on tickets if they're running around doing something. Um, front of house can pull up, can pull up the KDS and look and just, just to get an idea of, of you know, the ticket times. Um, so that's pretty cool. And I can do the same with the point of sale. I can actually be at home on all my PC and pull up the live point of sale um, and, and see what's going on. So if somebody has an issue and you know they need something voided, whatever it is, I can literally do that from, from anywhere. Uh, I was not able to do that before. Um, a bit in the weeds, but you know, I'm assuming everyone here is, is an operator of some sort. The 86 report. Um, you know, 86 is 86 in items is done poorly, is bad for your business. Um, Previously, it was a very difficult process and resulted in items being off the menu for days. Um, with GoTab, it's it's very elegantly handled. Uh, the kitchen can 86 items directly, and I can even set up the system so that everything that's on the 86 list comes off the list every night so that we don't have issues of things being off the menu for days. Um, so that's been a big help. Um, and then from my standpoint, um, I think biggest thing has been the visibility into the data. Um, so I can keep tabs on things and, and you know, deal with issues and, and deal with issues as they come up and also, you know, get a sense of how the business is going on a given on a daily basis. Wonderful. We're seeing some good question coming through the Q&A section. So we'll, we'll get to those shortly. We're about to wrap up the official part and we'll get to Q&A shortly. So bear with us, but keep asking questions. They're great. Um, my next question to you, Chris, is if you can share any big results with us in terms of sales numbers, ticket average, any any sort of numbers that we like to hear. Yeah. I don't have a lot of hard numbers yet. Um, you know, we've recently switched. But um, one thing I have done, um, I've calculated out the check-in time. Um, and that is about four times faster, um, which for us is very significant. So again, you know, 200 people coming into place in a short period of time, um, checking them in four times faster leads to a better guest experience. It gets them in the door, gets them drinking faster um, and checkouts faster. So that means, you know, when they're ready to go, they're out the door, they're off to across the street to the music venue where they may go. Um, the result is they have more time to drink, which results in more beer. So our sales have been excellent. I just don't have specific data on it, but, uh, but yeah, that's been helpful. 
Um, even the speed of service at the traditional bar has been faster because um, of the way the system works and with, with everything, uh, with the card and everything. Um, we've been able to get the throughput a lot faster on the, the bar. So the bar, bartenders can focus on making drinks, not transactions and pulling names and all that sort of thing that wastes their time. Um, definitely a reduction in mistakes, missed orders, um, items ordered that were off the menu, um, ordered for the wrong person, that sort of thing. So um, I don't have specific data, but there's been very, very uh, significant reduction in that sort of issue. Um, and then for my pocketbook, um, significant mm -hmm. result is that I pay less money every month. Um, the monthly fees, the, the merchant fees, everything is lower. So, you know, I'm happy to have a few extra bucks at the end of each month. So that's been a good result for me for a better system. <laughs> Great. Um, are there any other GoTap features that you're particularly excited to use or so, some third party tools that are integrated so, with? So we're a pretty robust user. Um, I, I, you know, because of my background, I, I see a feature and I want to take advantage of it. So we're using a lot. Um, the tech team would tell you I'm, I'm definitely finding some interesting stuff in there. Um, right now we're working on um, barcodes. Um, so we want to use uh, barcodes as much as possible, you know, at the bar, front of the house, everywhere we have any product that can possibly be barcoded. Um, we're getting barcodes at everything. So, you know, there's no looking anything up. It's barcoded out the door. Um, we're expanding this idea of different menus in different zones. We have uh, sort of a private room area um, and we do comedy shows occasionally. So um, we want to do a comedy show specific menu running simultaneous for the main menu. We ran into problems with that before. Um, so we're going to expand the use of zones, outdoor zone and all kinds of different things. Um, in terms of integrations, um, you know, we're using a bunch now, but we're in the process of um, getting our QuickBooks integration set up, um, which is obviously boring, 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 but certainly important. Um, and then um, Ahanify, is that the one? Ahanify. Ahana 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 yeah. I don't use it yet, so I don't know it, but um, uh, we're actually in process of setting up some brewing stuff. So um, Ohanify, we'll, we'll be looking at that to integrate with brewery operations when we get that going. Okay, wonderful. Um, and finally, uh, for my side, my last question here, what's next for Craftworks? And you. <laughs> well, when I finish this beer, another. <laughs> um, so I mentioned brewing in the last slide. So um, we, I've talked since I started about doing brewing, we haven't gotten to it yet, but we're going to get to it. Um, and actually what I want to do is, um, you know, we have 60 taps of other people's beer. I want to, I'm going to do a, a small scale, um, brewing operation, um, more as an incubator brewery to, for local folks to sort of, um, try some crazy funky stuff because, you know, I've got all the regular stuff here. I got good stuff here. So mm -hmm. I want to get some folks who want to make some crazy beers and we'll have the interesting brewing going on over there. Um, I do have a barbecue restaurant, um, a lot smaller than this. And, uh, so I'm going to put a, a baby version of this beer wall over there. So I'll be bringing go tab and, and pour my beer to my barbecue restaurant in the very near future. Um, and then I have had a lot of people say, you know, they'd like to open a craft works in their, in their neighborhood. So, um, who knows, you know, that could happen. We'll see. In my opinion, there should be one in Colorado Springs. If anybody is listening and tuning in from Colorado, <laughs> please, please look into that. Yep. Uh, great. Thank you so much, Chris. Right. We've made it through all our three sections. Does everyone hopefully feel more knowledgeable here about how to choose the right point of sale for your operation and how to switch in case you're not satisfied with your current point of sale provider? If you still have lots of questions, I'm seeing several of them at the Q&A. We'll get to it right now, but please post any others that you have. Um, if you like learning about GoTap today and would like a demo, feel free to just scan this QR code and schedule time with one of our experts. I'm going to give everybody a few seconds here to, to scan the QR code if they want to and pull out their phone. Um, I'm going to let Chris cheat a little bit and read this 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 question because I know it doesn't it doesn't show too well, so you might need to put your glasses on. I'm going to put glasses on. Yeah, I can't put, read without my glasses. Put your glasses on and take a look at that. I'm going to move it so you can see it better. Can you see it? Yep. yep. Okay, wonderful. So I'm going to go ahead and, and hop into the next slide over here. Just wanted to I'll let everybody know that we have some upcoming events. We obviously are going to be hosting several other webinars, so please stay tuned on our social media and our email newsletter sign up to, to know when we're doing other webinars. But uh, before we dive into the first question from the audience, I would like to share that for a third year in a row, GoTap is going to FS Tech in Dallas in September. 
FS Tech is the largest hospitality tech conference in the US and we have multiple free guest passes to give out. I'm hoping that Chris is going to take advantage of one of them. If you are interested in joining us at the show and also at happy hour, I'm organizing email us at marketing at gotab.io and we'll be sure to send you a free pass. We would love to have you on there with us. And now uh, it's actually time to jump into the Q&A section. Nice. Hopefully you're able to see this question. So let's, uh, long let's start uh, with the first part. Uh, Matthew yes. Hubbard, hopefully I'm not butchering the name too much, is asking, card declines even on pre-authorized cards and not being able to force through the transaction has been challenging with Toast. Yeah. So okay. do you yeah, want to start yeah, with yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, um, so first of all, um, it's, a, it's a odd situation with Toast. Um, you see a card decline and the way we operate, we pre-authorize the card and then they are not in the building when we close the tab because of the way we do it. So we're at risk if the pre-auth doesn't work. Um, and we were seeing a lot of card declines. And I'm assuming, wow, I've got really bad customers who have really bad credit or something. Um, and then one day I ran a, a $3 transaction on my own. I opened a tab with my card, ran a $3 transaction and just went to close it and it failed. I thought, well, I know I have more than $3 on my credit card. Um, Open another transaction with that same credit card. It went through fine. Bought a product with that credit card. Went through fine. Went to close that transaction. It failed. So there's credit card transaction fails that are nothing to do with whether there's money or not. Um, I haven't seen any of that with GoTab. But of course, you're going to see transactions fail. Money's not there, whatever else. Um, I'm sure most of you have gone through the process of every day you go in and try it again and try it again and try it again. And then it disappears and you've lost the money. Um, GoTab actually does that for you. So they'll... they'll um, it'll continually try. In fact, I heard a story from another GoTab, op GoTab operator who said that a lady called complaining that she got a charge because she hadn't been there in a month. And he said, well, that's because your charge didn't go through a month ago and it's been trying ever since. Um, it's a great success story. So, yeah. So um, not having to go check those, those down. The other is the GoTab is connected with other, it's, you know, any other GoTab location. And there's, um, I don't know all the technical details, but they have other ways of collecting um to make sure that the that you know they make good on those tabs. So that's been that's been good. That's been very helpful. Right. Um, Matthew is also asking about the seven shifts integration. Um, if 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 it's if it actually populates the GoTab sales data in a real it, time, it can. We haven't done it yet because I get the I get the data so accurately. And the way I'm working with GoTab, I don't I don't really do it. But yes, it can. I just don't do that part of okay. it. Okay. And his last part of his question is, what's your customer journey like at the check check in to start a tab, pouring beer, sitting down, and ordering food? How does GoTab find those tabs already open? Yeah. So the check in the front um, and the check in uh, for a toast pour my beer user. And I'm sorry for those of you who aren't. Pour my beer users, but um, involves opening a tab on Toast, going to a Pour My Beer device, searching to find that person, which could be a mistake if you get the wrong person. Um, very complicated. And then we have to we send people to their table. They're, they scan a QR code at the table, a separate QR to open their food tab. Um, we had with Toast, we had no way. People say, why can't it be on the same tab? And we said, we have no way of knowing whose tab is what. Right? We could take the food order from the front. But once they got to the QR, that was separate. Um, GoTab, first of all, the check-in is, is ridiculously easy. Authorize a card, program an RFID card, hand it to them, they're good to go. If they want to order food at the table, you basically, um, they give us a phone number and their tab gets texted to them. They open that text and they go to the table wherever they want to scan the QR and the system. So initially it knows when you come in, at the, I'm, I'm pointing this way because that's my check-in. <laughs> you can't see it. You come to check in, you have no idea. We have no idea where you're going to sit. Um, tab is open. They go sit at B4. They scan that code. The system says, oh, okay, Tanya's at B4. Got it. And it'll move with her. If she moved to another table, work, 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 move with her. And then they can just keep ordering on a tab. So that's been really cool. Great. Uh, another one should hopefully be easy, but I don't think you're using QuickBooks yet, right? Does GoTab link with QuickBooks? Yes. yes I know yes, it's, it's, it's it, integrated. Maybe. I don't know. My, you are not used to... My accountant's on it, so okay. I don't, But yes. Yeah, yeah, it absolutely does. Okay. Um, next question is from David Ringler. How robust is point of sale for food, restaurant, and merch inventories? What's your experience with that? Yeah, it's been good. Um, slight mistake because I, I loaded all my liquor and, and I had my inventory set. Um, I, I uploaded everything. And I had my bottle inventory set, not my serving inventory set. Mm -hmm. um, so I know it works because I poured one and says, okay, you're out now. I'm like, oh crap. So um, yeah, so inventory works and it's, um, it's got an interesting feature where you can say, 
if you run out, you can auto 86 the item or you can not. So, um, you know, it gives you that kind of flexibility of, of you know, when the inventory is out, how you want to handle it. Um, but yeah, that part's been, been super easy. And it's, I've had no problem pulling the list down, updating stock numbers in bulk and loading them back up. Perfect. So. Since we're doing well on time, I'm going to keep asking you a question, but if you yeah. need to keep, in, keep, sip, keep sipping on that beer or water. I got work to do to that. I, know. <laughs> I know you've been talking a lot. So next question is from Rash Sharma. How versatile is opening a point of sale from your phone or any device when you are away from your location? It's just voids or can you edit, add, et cetera? Uh, I, can, apps from your- I could be sitting on my... I can be sitting on my couch at home. I could open the point of sale. I could open a tab. I could order a brisket sandwich, send the order to the kitchen. Um, I could do the entire thing from from my house. Um, I couldn't run a credit card. The credit card part of it is is obviously you know it's got to have the the, um, the device. This is the credit card reader. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's Bluetooth actually, so you can, it can go anywhere. Um, but other than the actual charging the credit card, um, you can run the entire point of sale from your house or from anywhere which is really really cool which i feel like you're very excited about and use it a lot (laughs) i do i mean just just the ability to go in i mean you know it doesn't excite everybody but for me to be able to just see look at open tabs and see what people are drinking yeah um you know and literally i just i can refresh and oh tanya just had the the flip-flop from oh no so um yes that's been really cool that was on his build it i'm not paying for that one (laughs) all right uh we got next question from daniel on pair he's actually at the board maybe a friend please on me that one is i love that guests can have the same tab for food and drinks how many guests leave at the end of the night without closing out their tab how do you handle that so um yeah we actually there's a couple of ways we handle uh if you have a beer card um we have drop boxes tip boxes and you can actually uh, and we did this previously with Toast too. You could have um, you you drop your card in one of the four boxes with the different tip amounts, and then the end of the night we just go through and and crank them through and process them out. Um, so it's never been an issue that the um, with Toast the, people would automatically close the tab to order the food because um, when we first opened with Toast, we would let people scan the QR at their table and leave the tab open, which you want as an operator. You want people to keep ordering, keep ordering, but um, what we found was that they didn't close their tab. Next person comes up, scans that same QR. Now they're ordering. Now I'm ordering on Tanya's tab. So to solve that, we had to force clo- we had to force them to push the transaction through. Um, so all the transactions closed per order. Which obviously you're leaving revenue on the table. You're leaving sales on the table because I just saw a giant pretzel go through. I really want one, but do I feel like opening a brand new tab? Um, go tab. The tab is locked to the phone. So when you open a phone, I scan this QR, this is Chris's phone, Chris's tab on Chris's phone. Tanya can scan that same tab and that's Tanya's tab for this place. So that differentiates it so that we don't have any issue with an open tab being vulnerable to somebody else charging on it. And then if they didn't drop the card, then the end of the night, we just do 15% and close them out. It's no big deal at all. Have you ever had any issues with some um, some customers complaining that you automatically charge the 15%? No. Um, we, we With Toast, we did have, we sort of routinely had an issue with customers thinking we double charged them um, because of the way that system worked. But yeah, as far as, um, no, we haven't had any issues with that with GoTab at all. Okay. This is, if you're comfortable, you yep. can share this, but Justin Hawk is asking, can you give us a quick overview of GoTap fees compared to Toast? Um, so, you know, with Toast, um, I know they have the option to lease the hardware. We didn't, we bought the hardware um, and it's, you know, you have to buy the specific hardware. So, you know, the ELO screens are very expensive and everything's very expensive. Um, and, and then once you're past a couple of devices, which I have a lot of devices, um, you're paying a monthly fee on top of it. So, um, I think I'm. I was paying seven, seven hundred bucks, six hundred bucks a month just in in add-on fees for everything else, and I don't have any of that. Um, I, I, all together, I'm thinking it's like maybe a couple hundred bucks to go to have. It's not even that much. Um, and then the merchant fees. I mean, obviously, everybody's got merchant fees, um, and it's lower. It's not you know, it's not dramatically lower, but when you multiply it times hundred thousand dollars in sales, it's it's money. Yeah. So yeah, it's definitely and they're. GoTab is very public with their their pricing, um, which I like. Um, I know a lot of them, they'll sort of, it's very convoluted and there's all these different layers and then they start charging extra fees that you weren't expecting. No fees for that. Um, so I, it was kind of surprising when I went to, I was looking at GoTab and I thought, well, that's, that's what they're saying, but what's, 
behind the scenes and and it was very straightforward they, the merchant fees are right there and i'll tell you exactly what it is thank you um same same uh guest same uh attendee is asking i'm guessing there is again a, <laughs> i'm guessing there is a cash pay option absolutely well. absolutely yeah so the way we do it is because the beer wall and everything else um will typically require we ask for a credit card to open a tab if they absolutely don't have it we'll just say just we'll hold your license um and then they can run a cat transaction and but it, you can open with the credit card and you know when you come to pay then you can switch credit card you can merge it to another account you can pay with cash anything you want so yeah. fabulous and then matthew is asking aloha point of sale allows you to force through the transaction and puts the guest at risk of overdraft does GoTab do that um i have not heard a single guest with thousands of transactions i haven't heard anyone say that so probably would have happened <laughs> so no I've, I've never seen that happen Okay. Uh, Danielle is asking, I'll have a large venue similar to yours. My concern is that 50 guests can order the same burger at the same time, fl flooding the kitchen all at once. Yeah. Have you run into this problem? If so, how do you handle it? So two things. First of all, um, we learned a lesson very early on when um, when you've got QR um, ordering, there's not a natural throttle that you would have with wait staff. Um, and you know, we thought we could handle it. We had our first concert last year. Um, I believe it was Kenny Chesney, packed house, and the kitchen was was just absolutely overwhelmed. Um, we've handled it by shortening our menu, um, <clears throat> by, you know, limiting the number of items, things that they can, they are easily prepped. And we actually completely shifted the model to, um, instead of us bringing food to the table on show day, you come pick the food up yourself because there's just too many people and we can't get it there. And again, with what we had to do before is, each day go in and change the QRs and I have to go in and manually change the menu and all this other stuff. Now I can schedule that in advance and just have it change. Um, but the other issue, the other thing is that um, GoTab has some really cool throttling tools. So um, the kitchen has the ability to throttle items, categories of items, anything you want. So if they're seeing that kind of flow, they can put it in there. And the other is you can, you can actually add time so that the customer can see that, you know, if you want to order this particular item, it's, you know, we're kind of overwhelmed. It's going to be 20 minutes and then they can make that decision because the customer, you know, if they order, expect it right away and it's 20 minutes later, 30 minutes later, they're upset. If you tell them it's 20 or 30 minutes and it takes that, then that's their choice. And then they, they're fine with it. So those tools work really well. Great. We want to be respectful of everyone's time. So let's get to last two, three questions here. Um, next one is, does this system have a muck club feature with preferred, preferred pricing for members, typical for breweries? Yeah, David Twingler is asking. That's a good question. I don't know. I haven't, I have not looked into that. Oh, yet. funny enough, I should probably know, but uh, I'm putting you to go tap. I, th yeah. I would think so since Tim, the owner yeah, of yeah. Go Tap, is actually a brewery operator as well. Uh, but David yes. Twingler, we can follow up after I will follow up with it you. Is, that is it. one nice thing. It's, you know, when you get into Go Tap, it's obvious it was developed by an operator um, who's done all of the things that we're doing because a lot of times you think, oh, it should do this. And you think, oh, yeah, it does that. He did um, that to solve yeah. his problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Clearly least, built for yeah. the kind of deal things we're dealing with. So. Awesome. Uh, Haley is asking, do you find a lot of your guests using the tap sharing feature? Has that been working well for you? Um, I don't know yet. We've been, we just rolled it out. Um, so it's not, you know, we haven't done a lot with it yet. Um, but so far the response has been good. No complaints. No, okay. no complaints. And I think we've answered all. And I, I will say on that, there's, um, we have a wide variety of guests here. So we have, you know, some high tech people, but Monday night we have live, a live jazz band that tends to attract an older crowd. So we kind of try to make sure that we can we can simplify things as much as possible. So things like tab sharing, maybe we won't tell the jazz, uh, you know, we don't, don't expect so much of that from the, the jazz folks. But, um, you know, when you get the younger crowd in here, they, of course, want to do it. Okay. I'm just scanning through some of these questions because a lot of them are similar to what was already answered before. Uh, one more question here. You say check-in and check-out is faster, but how is it faster? Can you yeah. just dive, since we have time, can yep. you dive yep. into it a little bit yeah. more? Yeah, so... Um, you know, mechanically, the way it worked before is that, that someone will come in and, you know, welcome to Craftworks. So then we would open the tab in Toast. So, you you know, and you have to hit a certain button to get it to create an item that's going to, in the back end, push to, to, to pour my beer. Swipe their card, tab opens, and then you go over to the pour my beer terminal and do find their name, make sure the name is right. Um, we had a lot of issues with that tap the name, go through a few steps, program a card, um, and then hand it to the customer. Now, basically, they walk in, and 
we program a card, uh, a RFID card, put a credit card in, hand them both, and it's a matter of seconds. Okay, I think I'm scrolling through the questions. They're all very similar at this point. So unless anybody has one last question posted now right away, is there anything that you wish that I would have asked you or someone over here would have asked you that you feel like you wanted to know no. uh, before you did the actual switch? Um, no, I think, you know, I went with my eyes wide open. Um, <laughs> yep. And I think, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to learning more about what I can do. Um, like I said, I'm a, I like technology and I like what it can do for me. So I'm continuing to dig in there and your tech people will probably be very mad at me because I'll probably find things that don't work yet. But um, yeah, I'm going to keep pushing it to give my guests the best experience I possibly can. Fabulous. And I'll be back to be the guest again <laughs> soon, hopefully. Uh, thank you so much all for joining us today for our webinar on the topic of switching point of sale made easy. I hope, and I'm sure Chris hopes too, that it was very helpful for you and you feel like you've gotten the knowledge that you didn't have before. Uh, I had such a great time speaking with you, Chris, and it was really nice to be here. <laughs> it was nice to be here. pleasure to have you over here. Thank you so much for your time and sharing your extensive knowledge with us. Uh, and everyone, hopefully have a good day. We hope to see you on our next webinar. And thanks again for tuning in with us. And anytime anybody's in Gainesville, anybody wants to come see my massive beer wall and my GoTab system, come on by. I'm, I'm happy to show you around. Thank you so much for offering that. All right, everyone, have a nice day. Thanks so much for tuning in. Bye. And cheers to you, Chris. Thank you so much. <laughs> Appreciate it.